in the history of famed professional hunters. Names like Philip Percival, Harry Selby, and Kara Mojo Bell have flooded the pages of authors like Ernest Hemingway and Robert Rourke. Their adventures of man-eating lions, charging elephants, and client missteps have enthralled readers for nearly a hundred years. The story of aristocrat turned white hunter is the epitome of the romance and lure of Africa. Despite having a relatively short life, the story of Dennis Finch Hatton commands the hearts and minds of all who dream of wild lands of Africa and the sense of freedom they offer to the wandering adventurous spirit. Dennis was tall in stature and by all accounts, note him as possessing a charming personality. He was enjoyed by all, whether commanding a room in the classrooms of Eton and Oxford or on the safari hunting camps of East Africa. His analytical mind, unbridled athleticism, and flair for adventure made him one of the most coveted professional hunters of the 1920s and 1930s. Of aristocratic birth, Finch Hatton was never far from high society, but he felt England was not where he was destined to find fulfillment. After his formal schooling, he traveled to Africa in March of 1911. After a series of business follies, long trade expeditions, and the occasional hunt, he took a pilgrimage to East Africa, which was still a wild land, and he fell in love with it. He found solace in not being in the public eye. He even played Mozart on his portable gramophone while in the wildest of the bush. That solace, however, was briefly interrupted when he was commissioned as a temporary lieutenant attached to the East African Protectorate Forces during the East African Campaign during the First World War. He was even awarded the Military Cross in 1917. Following the end of the hostilities, he pursued his passion for hunting and eventually found his calling by becoming a professional hunter in 1925, at the ripe old age of 38 years old. After Theodore Roosevelt's famed safari in 1910, an African safari became the fashionable vacation for those with means and stature. Being of British high society, Finn Chatton's books filled quickly. He was good with clients and extremely calm, and most importantly, accurate with a rifle in times of stress. In White Hunters, a magnificent book by Brian Hearn, there are numerous stories of Finch Hatton's bravery. This, however, is my favorite. Finch Hatton was on safari with J.A. Hunter, a business partner and famed hunter in his own right, as they were traipsing through Mozzieland. A Maasai herdsman had reported two lions were ravaging his cattle, and he asked for help. After a journey of rummaging through the thorn scrub, they came across the lions at exceedingly close range. The lions slipped back into the thicket, and the hunters pursued. When out of nowhere, the first lion charged Finch Hatton, then the other. Without hesitation, he raised his double rifle to his shoulder and nearly simultaneously dispatched them both. This was no small feat. Most men couldn't pull the trigger one time at a charging line, let alone pulling the trigger two times accurately, despite the great recoil that a double rifle has. But as these two lions lay dead at the feet of Finch Hatton, he lowered his rifle as coolly and as calmly as if he was at a county fair shooting gallery. As he gained prestige, he even took Edward, the future King Edward VIII, and eventually the Duke of Windsor on an African safari. Edward took many trophies of epic proportion, but eventually he turned to photography and filming of wild game. It was possible at this time to kill copious amounts of game. Finch Hatton was disgusted by this and the newly popular trend of hunting from cars. He wrote London dignitaries and newspapers regularly demanding stricter game laws in colonial East Africa. While on the latter part of Edward's safari, Finch Hatton convinced him to advocate for the aforementioned game laws to prevent the eventual extinction of African big game. His name was almost lost to history. 
if it wasn't for the writing of Isaac Dennison's book out of Africa. The autobiographical book details the life of Karen Blixen, the wife of famed big game hunter Baron Blixen, and her coffee farm in East Africa. Karen and Finn Chatton had a long love affair, and the rest is history. The book was later made into a film by the same name in 1985. Meryl Streep and Robert Redford expertly play the roles of Karen and Dennis, and the film went on to win seven Academy Awards, including Best Director and Best Picture. Dennis Finch Hatton died tragically on May 14, 1931, when his gypsy moth plane went down while scouting elephant. He was 44 years old. Though he had a short career in Africa, it was not without great merit. There are very few letters, writings, and documentation that were left by Finch Hatton. In fact, most of what's written about him are from former lovers after his death. What we do have are a small selection of Dennis's tools and one of his storied hunting rifles that was his constant companion while battling against the beasts of prey. While well, Dennis Finch Hatton is a bit of a paradox, a man of noble birth who is equally comfortable in tales at a dinner party as covered in red dirt and warm blood in the country he held so dear. This rifle, this Mannlicher Schoenauer model of 1905 is no different. This cased rifle is more than the sum of its parts and is one of the few relics in which we connect to this famed white hunter. This rifle was put together using period parts from three separate rifles. According to the consigner notes, the stock in action came from the Steyr factory in 1906. The barrel is Belgian proofed and with a Steyr serial number of 827 that is confirmed to have been rechambered by George Gibbs firm in 256 Gibbs Magnum in about 1920. The front sight features a hooded blade and it's accompanied by two folding rear leaf sights. The rifle also has a German claw mount and features an Aldous Brothers scope and a tang mounted flip up peep sight. The stock is of wonderfully figured walnut and sharp checkering. If you notice the plaque, it features a cornet and seven pearls over the monogram M. This is most likely the seal of Sir Charles Markham, the second baronet of Arusha in East Africa, who was long-term friends and hunting companions with Finchatton. Likely, this rifle was presented to Finchatton from Sir Charles Markham when he left Kenya to return home to London. The provenance on this rifle is solid and included. According to the included letter from former owner J.H. S. Meyer, Gibbs rebuilt this rifle for Finch Hatton, and upon his death, Finch Hatton willed it to his niece, Lady Diana T. Arks, who lived in South Africa at the time. When she returned to London, she presented the rifle to S. Meyer. S. Meyer then sold the rifle decades later to the famed collector Howard Davenport. This rifle comes with an abundance of documentation, copies of articles, books, and even a DVD copy of the film out of Africa. It's housed in an oak and leather Gibbs takedown case with a matching cornet and M monogram. Also included are boxes of 256 Gibb Magnum cartridges. You can almost see this tall man clad in a pith helmet walking stoically through the tall grass in search for his prey, equipped with only his trusty rifle and a sharp wit. In the book, West with the Night by Beryl Markham, she writes, Africa is mystic, it is wild, it is a sweltering inferno, it's a photographer's paradise, a hunter's Valhalla, and an escapist utopia. It is what you will, and it withstands all interpretations. It is the last vestige of a dead world or a cradle of a new shiny one. To a lot of people, as to myself, it is just home. These items pay homage to the life of famed hunter Dennis Finch Hatton, one of the greatest to walk the hallowed hunting grounds of Kenya in the golden age of the African safari and it's only available 
right here at Rock Island Auction Company. <laughs>